Does the world need a transition to clean energy and a shift away from fossil fuels when even a country that literally has an abundance of oil and gas does not want to use them? It seems to us that the answer is obvious. In November 2015, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Vice President and Prime Minister of UAE and also the ruler of Dubai, launched the Dubai Clean Energy Strategy Program. The ambitious goal is to make Dubai the city with the lowest carbon footprint on the planet by 2050. To do this, 75% of all electricity needs will be provided by solar power plants and the remaining 25% by other clean energy sources. To understand the scale of the project, in 2020, solar energy accounted for only 10%. One of the pillars of the strategy was Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum's solar park. The phased construction of this huge solar power plant, 50 kilometers from Dubai, was divided into five phases. In the first stage in 2013, a small solar power plant with a capacity of 13 megawatt was erected in the desert. But the second stage in 2017, its capacity increased to 200 megawatt. Not so much, right? In 2020, the third stage was completed. The increase in capacity amounted to another 800 megawatts. If classical solar farms were built in the first three stages, then objects with different solar energy technologies appeared in the fourth, another 917 megawatts. 217 megawatts are provided by traditional solar cells. Another 600 megawatts are generated by the parabolic trough, a solar thermal collector that is straight in one dimension and curved as a parabola in the other two, lined with a polished metal mirror. The remaining 100 megawatts are generated by the solar power tower. In both unconventional technologies, sunlight is focused onto a reservoir of liquid of high heat capacity. The coolant, heated to several hundred degrees through a series of heat exchangers, sets in motion turbines that generate electricity. In mid-2022, the fifth stage was put into operation, again from classic solar cells for another 930 megawatts. Huge fields of solar panels are spread in the desert, with a total capacity of 2,860 megawatts. By the way, due to the storage capacity of up to 15 hours, the plant can work day and night. The energy accumulated during the day is supplied to consumers when needed. Right now, the applications for the next phases of the project are being deliberated, but it is already known that by 2030, the solar park will reach a capacity of 5 gigawatts. And that's not all. Why limit yourself to the area of one giant power plant, even if it is the largest in the world? After all, you can collect solar energy in the Emirates literally anywhere. Therefore, the Dubai Clean Energy Strategy stipulates that solar panels will be installed on every roof in Dubai by 2030. Moreover, at the end of 2019, the total capacity of installations used in private households and commercial organizations already amounted to 125 megawatts. The goal of the project is for solar panels on homes to produce 5,000 megawatts of energy by 2030. That is the same as the Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum Solar Park. They say that there is a fly in the ointment. Dubai's solar power plants are also facing some problems. Because the climate that makes solar power work so well in the UAE has a disadvantage. The first problem faced by Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum Solar Park is the need to constantly clean dust from solar panels. Dubai's arid and desert landscape is characterized by sand and dust storms, and unclean panels can lose 25-40% to 40 of their power. Traditionally, water is used for cleaning, but in the UAE, this is too valuable a resource. Therefore, Arab scientists are working on alternative methods, creating special anti-soiling coatings. What is more, in 2022, a group of researchers from MIT introduced the special conductive layer that is superimposed on solar panels, generates static electricity, and repels dust particles. In addition, the rest of the infrastructure also requires cleaning. If dust settles on power lines and becomes wet due to light rain, a short circuit can occur. And this has already happened in Iran in 2017, when a whole region of the country was left without electricity for a day. 
The second problem is extremely high temperatures. Dubai Solar Park engineers have to constantly test new materials and technologies in order to achieve efficient operation of solar panels in high temperatures. And they succeed. The average efficiency of solar panels in the world is 16 to 18 percent. Panels using polycrystalline at the Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum Solar Park have an efficiency of 22 percent. Moreover, the possibilities of new material, perovskite solar cells, are being explored. It will increase efficiency by up to 33 percent. However, even such innovations do not eliminate all problems. At high temperatures, the materials used to protect the panels, such as silicone, still degrade faster. And if in Europe solar panels last 25 years, in Dubai their lifespan is reduced to 15 years. In fact, this is a price to pay for the efficiency of solar energy in this region. And what about solar energy profitability? Is it really effective or is it just another expensive toy for shakes? The UAE has become the first country to break the 3 cents per kilowatt hour barrier. It has been speculated that the government is subsidizing solar power plants covertly to keep the costs so low. But this information was refuted. Solar energy in the UAE does indeed produce cheap electricity. Continuing to operate with numbers, we note that the cost of solar energy over the past five years in the UAE has decreased by 50% and is the lowest in the world. How is this achieved? In fact, there are many factors. One of the most important factors is the reduction in the cost of the panels themselves. The rise in demand provoked a boom in supply. The market is oversaturated with manufacturers, including large ones. Therefore, panels that previously cost about $500 are available in the UAE for $100 each. The second crucial factor is the cost of financing. Shakes lend to companies implementing projects at record low interest rates. The third factor is that in the UAE, the costs of research, construction and development are lower than in Europe and the USA. The fourth factor is longer contracts. In the UAE, public utilities enter into 25-year contracts for the supply of electricity, against the global standard of 15 to 20 years. This gives solar power plant developers more time to repay their initial investment. Surely, some factors cannot be called 100% competitive, but these are not government subsidies anyway. The example of Dubai shows how solar energy can be competitive with fossil fuels, which today cost an average of 4 to 6 cents per kilowatt hour. At the same time, it is not even necessary to directly inject taxpayers' money into unprofitable projects. It is enough just to create favorable conditions. In fact, none of the above factors is unattainable in other countries, except perhaps the cost of labor in more developed countries. And the fact that the Emirates is the country with the most sunny days in the world. Nevertheless, even if the price of electricity is twice as high as that the sheikhs offer, it will still be competitive compared to fossil fuels. This means that even under relatively favorable climatic conditions, other countries can and should develop similar projects. Sheikhs prove that cheap solar energy is not a miracle. All we need is government assistance, innovation, and more sunny days.